Hi guys, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm creating some French country thrift flips. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first project is this sweet little duck. I didn't love the color, but it had a lot of beautiful detail and a lot of potential. After cleaning, I'm giving this little duck two coats of Dixie Belle's Umber Silk Mineral Paint. It has a built-in stain blocker and a built-in top coat, so it is perfect for this project. I definitely recommend using an oval shaped brush like the one I'm using or a round brush when you're painting something like this that has a lot of detail. Having a brush with bristles in that shape really allows you to get into all of those details and it definitely cuts down the time that that takes. So I'm going to work my way around this sweet little duck making sure that I have good coverage and you can already see that this paint is highly pigmented. My second coat is only going to really be a touch up to make sure I didn't miss any areas. If you're using silk mineral paint, it's best to give it one to two hours to dry completely. After my paint has dried completely, I'm going to bring out some of those beautiful details. I'm going to be doing some dry brushing with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I've loaded up a chip brush and I'm dabbing off the excess and then I'm lightly brushing over the details with a very light hand. We're just catching the edges and it's really highlighting all those beautiful curves and the feathers of the wings. It's a really beautiful and simple effect. If this was not to your liking, you could achieve a similar result by using a paint wash and maybe wiping back the excess or maybe doing a glaze or even a white wax. Just remember that the glaze is going to sit in the details, same with the wax, whereas dry brushing highlights the edges. It doesn't sit in the details. So again, it just depends what look you want to achieve. This is definitely a very subtle look and the key here is really to have very little paint on your brush as you're doing this. If you're working on a piece and you want to achieve a similar result to this but it doesn't have those details, you could add texture to a flat piece. You could use some of Dixie Belle's Sea Spray in your paint to create a sort of stone texture and add it to a flat surface and then come in and do a similar process to what I'm doing now. You can definitely create that texture if the piece that you are working on does not have the details on it for you to highlight. As I'm working on this, it's definitely reminding me of a weathered garden statue, something that's been out in the weather for years, and I am just really loving this look. This little bird no longer looks like it was painted for a child and there's nothing wrong with that but we are not going for that today now it is looking a lot more sophisticated and definitely something i could imagine sitting in some sort of a cottage garden once my paint is completely dry i'm going to seal the entire little duck with dixie bell's clear bestang wax and then i will buff off the excess And here's our finished duck statue. This was such a quick and easy way to update something that was looking a little bit tired and I think he looks super cute now. Let me know what you think of this little duck in the comments. Our next project is this handmade wooden sign that I found at the thrift store. To begin, I'm going to give this three coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. Remember, these paints have a built-in stain blocker, which is perfect for this project because it is wood and it does have a few knots here and there. And really, my third coat is just going to be a touch-up just to make sure that I have even coverage. 
This was a really great find. I could tell that this was handmade and I love anything like that, especially if it's a wood project. So I definitely had to grab it. And Endless Sure is one of my favorite cream tones. So I think they're going really beautifully together. On my second coat, you can really see that it's filling in beautifully. The coverage is wonderful. And on my very light third coat, I am speeding up the process of the drying because I want to create a little bit of texture. I'm then going to be using a design from IOD's Ephemeral Melange Transfer. Unfortunately, the design was a little bit too big, but we can definitely work with this. I'm going to actually cut all of the text away from the florals so that we can rearrange them exactly how we want. So you can see that each time I'm positioning it to see where I'm going to have to cut, I even crease it in a few areas to see where I'm going to have to trim off some of the leaves down the bottom and part of the rose up the top. So don't be afraid to cut out your transfers to get them to fit your project. Next, I'm removing the backing sheet and I'm starting to rub and burnish with the transfer tool that comes in with the pack. And you can see I'm also working the transfer into the indents of the wood. I am going to get a bit of cracking and some gaps, but we're going to distress this. So I'm not worried about that. So I'm just working my way along and lifting that carrier sheet as I go. And it's really coming off quite easily. I'm then using my fingers to gently press the transfer further into the gaps and the carrier sheet to rub and burnish further. Now we're going to add our text. I'm adding that illustrated text up in the top corner and then I'm going to add the word catalog. I did separate catalog from some of the other text. So I'm really cutting and organizing this exactly how I want and I love how you can do that quite easily with IOD transfers. The same with this other text here. You can see I was a bit worried I'd lose some text in the gap there. So I've cut them further apart and I am now rubbing and burnishing them into place. If you don't have access to this transfer, you could always use decoupage paper, perhaps stamps or stencils to get a similar look. Once I have everything in place, I'm now going to come in with some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress the transfer and also the gaps between the transfer. And I am then going to change to an 80 grit sandpaper shortly, just so that I can distress the edges a little bit further. You always wanna be very gentle when you're distressing your transfers, just so that you don't accidentally rip them apart because they are a very, very thin, uh, vinyl type material. Finally, I'm going to seal my transfers with Dixie Bell's Best Dang Wax in clear. And here's our finished floral sign. I'm really happy with how this turned out. That transfer is absolutely gorgeous and they are so fun to work with. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project today is this lovely caddy that I have in my stash. It looks great as is, but it's a bit plain. So I'm going to use IOD's Millow's Pages Transfer. I'm specifically going to look at adding the mushrooms. I still have a lot of those left. So I'm cutting a strip of those that will fit on the caddy and just sort of estimating where things will go. I did have to cut out a few extra and I wanna add some of that text. So I've removed the carrier sheet and I'm laying it onto my caddy and then I'm starting to rub and burnish the design. This transfer does take a little bit more rubbing because it is so intricate. There are so many tiny details, but I found if I make sure that I lift up that carrier sheet as I go, it definitely comes away a lot easier. So I'm going to work my way across until I have all of those transfers down. And then I'm going to start adding in those extra little bits that I had to cut and working them in so that they fit nicely. 
I'm only going to add the transfers just to the one side. And then once I have them all down, I am going to use IOD's Queen B stamp. I love using this particular stamp here just for the text. So I tend to stamp up the whole design and then I get a baby wipe and I wipe off the excess. This is just some wonderful random text that I like to add to my project. So you can see I'm inking up the section that I want and then I'm going to very carefully remove the excess from the stamp that I don't want with a baby wipe. And we're going to be adding it to the handle. I just thought that it looked a little bit plain and I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the top there. So I'm just removing that extra ink very carefully and then we'll be ready to stamp. I did sand back the handle with some 220 grit sandpaper just to give it a little bit of tooth. Now I'm positioning the stamp where I want it to go and then I'm going to press down carefully. Remember, keep one hand on the stamp at all times while the other hand adds a bit of pressure to get the detail and the sections that you want. Something else that I like to do is to use a baby wipe to wipe back the ink a little bit. I find that it just fades it nicely. And I am also going to end up using a 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress it as well. I want it to have a bit more of a vintage feel. To finish, I'll use Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And here's our finished caddy. This was a quick and easy flip, but I think it was very effective. This is no longer plain. I think it could definitely be used for garden tools. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. It definitely had a bit of a garden feel today. I hope it's inspired you to transform some of your own home decor. Let me know if you had a favorite from today's video. Please hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.